In this video, we're going to learn about composite functions. Imagine we had a function f of x equals 3x plus 2. That would have a function machine that looked like this. Imagine we had a second function g of x, which was x squared minus 1. That would have a function machine that looks like this. Now imagine we took an input x and put it through the first function machine. We times it by 3 to get 3x. We add 2, which gets you 3x plus 2. And then that's the output of the first function machine. For the next step, we're going to connect the two function machines together to make one massive function machine. This means that the input for the next one is just the output from the previous one, so 3x plus 2. We take 3x plus 2 and square it, and then we take that and subtract 1. This would then be our output. So for this giant function machine, the input is x, and the output is 3x plus 2, all squared, take away 1. So let's recap what we just did. We started with an input x, we applied the function f to it, so we got f of x, and then we had a function g, but rather than having x as the input, we put the output from the previous function, so we put a function within a function, like this. This gave us the answer, 3x plus 2 all squared, take away 1. And this is what's known as a composite function. We wouldn't normally write it with the double brackets on the left hand side. We'd remove the outer set of brackets. We would pronounce the left hand side as gf of x, or possibly g of f of x. Now let's try some examples. So we have two functions here, f of x and g of x, and we first of all want to find gf of x. This means we take an input x, we apply the f function to it, which gets f of x, and then we take the output from that and put it into the g function. The best way to write this down is look at your g function first. So g of x is x squared minus 5. We're going to write that out again, but instead of x's, we write brackets. So it would be bracket squared minus 5. Then inside all of the brackets, you write the whole f function. So f of x is x plus 1, so we write x plus 1 inside that bracket. We then just try and simplify this a bit. So x plus 1 all squared is just x plus 1 times another x plus 1. And don't forget the takeaway 5 at the end. We can expand this using FOIL. So x times x, x squared. x times 1 is plus x. 1 times x is plus x. And 1 times 1 is plus 1. And again, don't forget that negative 5. We can simplify this because x plus x gives you 2x. And plus 1 take 5 gives you negative 4. So that's our answer. What if instead it was fg of x, so the other way around? This means you take an input x, you apply the g function to get g of x, and then whatever you get as the output for that, you put into the f function. So this time we write out the f function, but instead of x, write brackets. So f of x is x plus 1, so we'll write bracket plus 1. Then inside those brackets, we put the whole g function. So the g function is x squared plus 5, so that goes inside the bracket. Now we can simplify this one as well. So we have x squared minus 5, and we don't actually need the brackets here, and then plus 1. The negative 5 plus 1 would simplify, so we end up with x squared, take away 4. Let's try another set of examples now. So we're going to start again with gf of x. So we write out the g function, but replace the x with brackets. So g of x is 8x, so it's 8 bracket. Then inside that bracket, we write the whole f function. We can then simplify this. If we expand the brackets, we have 8 times x over 2, which gives you 8x over 2, and then 8 times plus 10, which gives you plus 80. And of course, 8x over 2 is the same as 4x. So it's 4x plus 80. Let's try the other way around again. So we'll do fg of x. So we write out the f function first, but change the x's to brackets. So it's x over 2 plus 10, so it's bracket over 2 plus 10. Then inside that bracket we write the whole g function, so 8x. This one can simplify quite easily. We don't need the brackets on top, and 8x divided by 2 is 4x. So it's 4x plus 10. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. 
Check out the video I think you ought to watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.